AMD's own HD7870 was often praised by those of us as the poor man's GTX 1050. But today, 10 years later on, can modded drivers keep that reputation up? This right here is AMD's HD7870, a mid-range GCN1 card from 2012, a decade ago now, which seems so strange to me as it was a HD770 or 7770 from this generation that got me into proper PC gaming, mostly because of the spec packed options, with the HD7870 here being no exception, featuring 1280 shading units, 2GB of GDDR5 VRAM, and using around 150 watts under full load, it can be a tad heavy on power considering the specs it's got to offer, but considering some entry level graphics cards aren't actually shy of that mark when it comes to power consumption, it doesn't seem all too bad now. You can find these cards from anywhere between £20 and £50 on eBay, and with CEX having these in stock from time to time, you can find them somewhere in the middle of this price range with a two year warranty. The only downside of course? AMD has now dropped driver support for virtually all the cards us budget users are using, meaning our cards are essentially useless to the developers of them, or the creators of them however you want to word it. But that's not quite how it is. See, modded drivers are here, and the question is, how decent are they? Now I hope I pronounced this right when I say that the Nimez or Nimez drivers are available from Guru3D and became recommended to me after the poor performance I was seeing on the R9 390 and the R9 Fury in certain titles, namely brand new AAA games like Halo Infinite, where the performance was just terrible at every setting or resolution tested. But once I did a brief test with some modded drivers, we were seeing two to three times the performance over stock drivers, making these previously unplayable AAA games now a feasible target on even these ancient HD series cards. You know, and that is definitely breathing some fresh life into these old cards. And either way, the prices are dropping off very quick on these HD series cards because the driver support is no longer there and they're pretty crap for mining, so you can pick them up for a very compelling price. Despite them being the same card as the R9 series they were rebranded as, so they're not as old as they may seem. Now, the Nimez drivers are available to download directly off Guru3D, as I said, and the install didn't actually require me to mess around with any INF files or even Windows security like I've had to do with previous modded drivers on like the HD4890 and older Terrascale cards. All I did was run DDU to get rid of my older AMD and Nvidia drivers, and then I promptly, while I was in safe mode, started an installation. Which just goes all the way through like a normal installer, I didn't have any issues at all. Yes, I had to tell Windows it was okay to install these drivers, but that just involved clicking, I don't know, maybe three or four prompts, and then we were done. The only concern I had after the installation was that the card was showing up as a 280X. Which this card is not. This is not a 280X. If it was to be rebranded, it is the 270X. So it's been ranked a tier above where it actually should be. At the end of the day though, this didn't cause me too much concern, as you'll see in the benchmarks. Now we are going to be testing on my normal Ryzen system, which should give the HD7870 plenty of headroom, so we will be entirely GPU bound in virtually all instances, to really find out the limits of this little here chip, because I've not tested it in about 3 or 4 years now. I will be testing with the modded drivers, the stock final drivers and the Linux Mesa drivers, but the Linux segment will be towards the end of the video as that's not primarily the focus, but I did want to get it in there. At the end of the day though, that's what everyone's here for, to find out how this card performs for the price point with these modded drivers, and the only way to find that out is of course in the benchmarks. Starting off the benchmarks with Red Dead Redemption 2, I noticed there was very little difference in terms of performance between 720p or 1080p, so I opted for the higher resolution, and wrangling with the settings, which is a pain in the ass because of that heavy VRAM limit, we were able to go with low settings and a few medium options selected for things like shadows and occasionally a few of the lighting options, with the card pushing out around 35 to 45 FPS respectively, which was very playable considering it was always over that 40 FPS mark unless there was heavy action. Given that the game is extremely VRAM intensive, it didn't seem like there was much I could do to actually improve performance beyond this, because trying to change the settings seems to push the VRAM up even higher when you select a lower option. You have to configure it all via the INI file and then pray that the game will actually start. So instead, with the most wrangling I could be asked to do, this is the best experience you're going to get on this type of card. 
Battlefield 5 ran very smoothly with the 1080p resolution and predominantly lower settings. Still nothing to scoff at by any means as this game looks absolutely brilliant even at these lower settings. The game averaged around 67 FPS, which felt significantly higher than the more fluctuating 60 FPS I was seeing beforehand with the older drivers, something that I will be touching on at the end of benchmarks as I said. Heavy scenes would of course cause drops to this frame rate as well as spawning in could cause this as you probably noticed at the start of the benchmarks, and all in all it was a very nice experience and one that was definitely assisted by the use of modded drivers. Grand Theft Auto 5 pretty much ran as expected with higher settings and anywhere between 65 and 70 FPS on average, which was still a slight increase over the stock drivers of around 5 to 10%. The game felt very smooth, looked lovely, and frame times did also see a slight uplift as well, something that I wasn't expecting given that this game is fairly well optimised by AMD's very own GCN drivers, because if anyone remembers trying to run the game before 15.4, you'll remember how much of a mess it was. Still, this was the case throughout single player or online, and even when things got pretty intense, it was a very nice experience on the HD 7870. BeamNG ran surprisingly well with a mixture of medium and high settings, mostly leaning towards the medium settings though. We saw around 63 FPS on average with the 1080p resolution selected, and this was through some of the more intensive maps. Once again you could see this fluctuate higher or lower depending on the map chosen, but in general you would see playable frame rates across the board, and something that is still very decent by today's standards especially considering this isn't one of the most well optimised games in the world, and can be rather intensive at higher settings, and higher resolutions as well. Halo Infinite, along with most of the other games you probably know to this point, didn't really like overlays, but whereas most games would just see performance suffer and in general become a bit unstable, Halo Infinite would crash every time I tried to use an overlay, only ever making it to the menu screen and never into game. However, once we were in game, we did get a fairly reasonable experience. The game averaged anywhere between 45 and 60 FPS depending on what was going on, and in the end I opted to cap the game at 45 FPS for a smoother experience. Experience? Well, either way, it made the game very playable, and considering this game was unplayable before with the original stock drivers, it really does go to show that these old cards have a lot more to give given they're running AAA games from 10 years after their release date and are only let down by AMD's poor final drivers. Mountain Blade Bannerlord was run with 1080p and a mixture of low and medium settings, in which we saw around 50 FPS on average in some of the more medium sized battles. Heavy foliage and of course larger battles could see a result lower than this, but on average you'll see anywhere between 50 to 60 plus FPS during most of the early to mid game, and you can always turn down the battle size to maintain this frame rate well through to the late game, so not a half bad experience. Star Wars Fallen Order was another example of a game being smoother when it was run with a capped or targeted frame rate. Targeting 45 FPS in this instance, we saw the game average very close to this figure, usually running anywhere between 40 to 46 FPS, which was pretty decent. This was of course with the medium options enabled and a 1080p resolution, and the game didn't use any sort of scaling during this, it was running an entirely true 1080p resolution. So given this game runs so well on that older Fire Pro I was using, the original Xbox One equivalent card thing I suppose is what you'd call it, and either way this provided an even better experience than that. Now the final question I wanted to ask was, can it run Crisis Remastered? and the game just wouldn't start with the Nemez drivers, claiming there is a problem with the installation when they are in use. I did try it in another system, as well as a full reinstall of the game and Origin, but there was no dice. So instead I decided to run Kenshi, which is a pain in the ass to run at the end of the day, and also ran very nicely on this HD7870. So you can't run Crisis, but you can run Kenshi, which ran very nicely with medium settings, a 1080p resolution, and it makes it the perfect pairing for a game that can only really use one core. So with those benchmarks all out of the way, what genuinely struck me as interesting was the really good improvement to performance we saw, and I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that AMD's final drivers on these GCN cards 
is frankly terrible. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, they are working final drivers the same way the TerraScale drivers are final working drivers. But we'll take a look at AMD's uh, competitor, NVIDIA's Fermi series. That came out the same time as TerraScale, and they left it with perfectly working final drivers and even DirectX 12 support. What did GCN get? We saw cards only six years old, like my R9 Fury, just being abandoned. When even it goes to show that even their cards from 10 years ago, that are still in the consoles, that are still supporting games, run absolutely fine. The only issue we are seeing with these cards not being able to run modern games is the fact that AMD hasn't supported them, so it's fell to the community to fix it on their behalf, which is frankly just atrocious. I mean, I haven't actually wrote anything into this script. The actual script goes back to me talking about frame times, which is what I'll get onto now. Either way, I did notice a large improvement to frame times across the board compared to the stock drivers. Usually nothing too dramatic, but Rage titles such as GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2 felt much smoother compared to the stock drivers. Indie titles received very little change in terms of performance, often just performing the exact same, as there is not really getting any real optimizations from the drivers regardless, which is not a detriment to the card, as performance was still more than adequate. It just doesn't offer you the huge improvements in 100% of use cases. But in general, most titles from 2018 onwards did see around anywhere between 3-10% to improvements depending on what you were doing in-game, and this was predominantly in AAA titles. And for a card retailing between 20 to 50 pounds, that is nothing short of amazing. It just depends on what you're going to be running and whether or not you'll see those improvements. So, because everyone always asks me every time we touch on a topic like this to delve into the world of Linux, and for once that's actually very appropriate here, as Linux has offered us open source AMD drivers for the best part of a decade now on this series, and it's been well adopted since its release. I decided to test across Ubuntu with the latest Mesa drivers, as I felt that gave a good entry level point into the world of Linux and the performance on that side. Modded drivers do compare pretty well to the Linux side actually, although throughout most instances it was only really source games that saw superior Linux performance. In general what you'd see is stock drivers, followed by the Linux drivers, followed by the modded drivers. And then in some titles you'd see Linux at the bottom just purely because it doesn't have Linux side optimizations in those titles. But you know, that isn't to say that the Linux side of things is poor at all, as these cards will be getting updates for many more years to come, well by beyond the time that these cards will be getting support on Windows, as eventually they'll dwindle into obscurity. But on Linux, there's probably quite a large chance that everything AMD has put out in recent years has been a semi-derivative of GCN, that there will be a lot of reason to support these cards, and the fact the community is doing it in a way that the multi-billion pound AMD hasn't is something that I will be very critical of, as I already went on my tangent earlier. We've heard enough about me complaining about AMD and my lost R9 Fury support, but frankly, you know, the community has outdone AMD here, and I am very happy to see that modded drivers and Linux Mesa drivers are actually still ensuring these cards can be used today. Before we head off though, I will say that they aren't all positives to using modded drivers. AMD VCE did suffer with some stability issues under the modded drivers, which is the way of recording what's going on on your screen via your graphics card. Perhaps it's because the HD7870 was being detected as the 280X, and it was causing it to be not utilised properly in terms of video recording. It did work in OBS, but anything higher than the high quality preset would result in frames being dropped, even though we had plenty of encoding headroom according to Task Manager. So you do lose some aspects of the card when opting for the community support. Just most of the benefits of performance actually do outweigh you know, AMD VCE, which is 10 years old, being a little bit wonky from time to time. So in conclusion, the HD7870 with the added benefit of modded drivers, does it make all the difference we wanted it to? Well, yes. I would genuinely recommend these drivers to anyone that wants to play anything modern on these GCN cards, or if you're having issues with the final drivers, as a few people have reported. Especially if you're playing AAA cards, you know, because Halo Infinite is unplayable in the stock drivers. The moment you install these, you're seeing very playable frame rates. If you're also interested in buying one of these HD 7870s, I'd love to hear your thoughts on them, as they seem to be surprisingly good value while prices are dropping. So, you know, if you've only got anything to say, if you've got any opinions on AMD abandoning these cards, if you've got any thoughts at all, please do let me 
hear them because, of course, I always read the comments and would love to hear people's opinions on AMD abandoning these cards and the Linux side of things and, you know, the Windows side of things. So thank you very much for watching and good night. Thank you.